Here's a drawing I made recently. I'm going to show you some time lapse footage and also just talk about the process of making it. I started off with this portrait. It's my wife and I had a photo reference that I was working from. But I knew I wanted this tessellating arabesque pattern in the background, so before I started to draw too much more, I went ahead and put in the foundations for that pattern. I chose this particular pattern because honestly it seemed like one of the easiest patterns to do, but in reality it ended up being insanely complicated when it came for laying down the foundation marks. And I can only imagine what some of the more complex arabesque patterns involve. I knew that one of the biggest challenges was going to be the interplay between the pattern and my wife's very, very curly hair, but potentially this could also be one of the more interesting aspects of the drawing. So first I lightly sketched out all of the main chunks of hair, all the main locks of hair, and then over that lighter drawing I made darker marks for the pattern. And my plan was basically to try to preserve the pattern as I began shading in the hair by shading in the sort of tessellations at a different level of value. Here you can see I've kind of abandoned that idea already and I've put in the white charcoal pretty much this in the same range of value regardless of what stage of the tessellations it's passing through. Also, I don't have video footage of this part of the process for whatever reason. I just, <laughs> I just wasn't feeling it, so I was just taking random photos. I, I really like watching video footage from start to finish, uh, those sort of time-lapse drawings, so I want to get better at doing it. You can see that the pattern is almost disappearing completely, you know, in the hair now. The, the hair is out-competing the pattern. You can't see it anymore. But my plan was to bring it back at a later stage, which I ended up doing. Here I'm adding some of the dark undertones under the lighter locks of hair. My wife had her hair bleach blonde at this point, and you know how it grows out and it's darker underneath, so it had that kind of pronounced value contrast. So by this point I can see all the individual locks of hair, but they're a little too like flat because the, the curls don't have enough modeling of light to shadow. So here I added some of the shadows to try to make it a little more sculptural. And by the end of this process I've pretty much got all the values locked down how I want them, so I'm ready to move on to the pattern in the background. You can see up here I left the foundational circles that the pattern was based on and I kind of want that feeling of it, the pattern falling apart as it goes up and becoming more concrete as it comes down. So I'm probably going to like let it sort of dissolve as it goes up and then sort of emphasize it down here. There's a lot of really nice details in the hair that I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose about 35% of what I just did because I'm going to darken these areas in between the larger star shapes. I just realized that one of the lightest parts of the hair is actually in a place where I have one of the, the tessellations that I'm planning to darken. So these smaller tessellations are going to be the darker parts and that's exactly where that lightest part of the hair is, which that's like a real bummer. I'm going to lose a lot of this really nice detail that I've got in a lot of these places as I go. But you know, that's the unfortunate part about not planning it out and just sort of jumping in willy nilly like this. So now I've sped up the footage about 10,000 times so that you don't have to sit here for too long while you watch this take shape, but you can start to see that I'm shading in uh, these sort of plus, like these pluses or you know, sort of like, a, yeah, it's like a plus sign with the little points, right, that form the tessellations in between the stars. And um, I'm just using like a, like a H pencil or something, 2H maybe relatively light uh, pencil and uh, you know as I as I went through yeah, I was trying to see where do I want to sort of cover the form where do I want to sort of like let it disappear uh, unfortunately through a lot of this footage there is this like reflective sheen that some of you may know from graphite that is kind of disturbing the way that it looks on the uh, left hand side there and at the end I, I have a photo without that so you can kind of get a better sense of what it looks like and here it is so yeah you can kind of see it's a little more it's a little easier to see the darker shapes and the and the sort of the lighter uh, star shapes in between and yeah I, I 
I guess I'm fairly happy with it. Um, I think I still think I could have articulated the curls a lot better if I had had more time. I was a little bit rushed throughout this, um, but yeah, I think overall, overall, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Oh, I forgot to mention the entire reason I made this was because I had this really cool frame that I wanted to, and I needed something to, to put into it. I didn't have anything for it. So um, yeah, that was, that was the whole impetus behind the entire drawing. The frame is some sort of mother of pearl like shell inlaid into like a dark kind of resin. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to finally have something to put into it that uh, is worthy of the frame. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And if you did enjoy it, uh, I would really appreciate it if you want to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, if you would subscribe, that helps me out a ton. Um, I make mostly videos about art history, but from time to time, I do like to post these sort of time lapse, time lapses of artworks that I'm making myself. And um, hopefully I'll continue to get better at them. But again, thanks for watching and ciao for now.